Hey boys and girls, this is Wild Man Wolves here, and I'm doing a review of last night's WrestleMania 33. Even though the WWE don't want you to know it's 33, but it is. So, all in all, this pay per view was a tale of two stories. The first half was very good, the second half was some hot mess, and it Basically, to me, ruined the show because a lot of people lost for no reason. One person shouldn't had a main event match because he didn't already had two du <laughs> WrestleMania main events already where nobody wanted to see him in there in the first place, but they just jammed him in there anyway. And somebody that should have retired a few years earlier once their streak got broken. But more to that later. I'm going to go into the matches from beginning to end. So I'm not going to do the pre-show. I don't care about that. I'm going to just do the main card. So the opening was AJ Styles versus Shane Man. I know a lot of the critics was already doom and gloom talk about Shane gonna jump off of this, Shane gonna jump off of that. Why is the boss's of son get to wrestle in the ring and all this and that? Man, go ahead with that crap. Shane man put on a hell of a match with AJ Styles. It was an actual wrestling match, which was pretty good to see because people was thinking Shane all he was gonna do was stunts. He did do some of them sloppy punches that he was famous for, but that was only in one part, but Toe to toe, he was a hell of an opponent for AJ, surprising enough. One of the better matches on the show, surprising enough. So AJ picks up the win, so AJ can move on and maybe end up getting back into the title picture, even on Raw or SmackDown. So the next match was Kevin Owens versus Chris Jericho. The build-up between these two friends breaking up was just excellent, especially the festival of friendship was good. But this match was basic. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was just basic because these people are just too good to wrestle each other. And they, both of them knows how to put on hell of a matches. But I don't know if the placement of this on the card, might have threw them off. They were tired. I, I don't know. They put that all in all, but it just didn't have that oomph. I think Shane and AJ kind of stole some of their thunder. So, ne next match was the Fatal Four Way elimination match for the Raw Women's title. You had Nia Jax, Bailey, Sasha Banks, and Charlotte. Bailey was going in as a champion, and a lot of people was complaining that Bailey should have been coming in trying to go after the championship. But all in all, this was a good match. Nia Jax, she they brought her up too early. She she needed a little bit more seasoning in SmackDown. She was just basically the force that they needed to get out the match early. To tell a little story with her, but she got eliminated first, of course. But Charlotte, it came down to Charlotte and Bailey. Sasha Banks, she was okay in the match, but she didn't really do anything for real, to be honest with you. This should have been just Bailey and Charlotte, but Bailey prevails with a Macho Man elbow. Match went by kind of quick for it to be a um, fatal four way match, so. Glad to see that match be over with because it was only a 12 minute match. So, Bailey goes out as the women's champion on Raw at WrestleMania, which is a good defeat. Now, hopefully, she can move on to wrestle somebody else, but it's not too many people on Raw women's division at the moment. Maybe they'll bring somebody in for her to feud against a fight. Sasha turned on her on wrestle 
at Raw tonight. We'll see. And the next match, damn, two <laughs> fatal four way. Well, this was a four way match. Um, ladder match, so it wasn't really a fatal four way. It was just the um four. It just it wasn't an elimination match. It was just a basic fatal four way. So, um. We had the club, Enzo and Cass, and Sheamus and Cesaro. That was supposed to be the original match, but the New Day came out. Everybody's thinking the New Day was going to insert themselves in the match and end up taking the titles. But no, it wasn't the New Day. It was the returning Hardy Boys. Jeff Hardy and delete, 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 delete. Matt Hardy and he got the <laughs> delete chance started and everything, which was pretty cool to see. To me, this was the match of the night just to have the Hardys come back. And hopefully they'll let Matt be broken, Matt Hardy, and do some of the crazy mess he was doing in TNA because that character is just over and that's just cool to see. But it was also cool just to see Hardy Boys back in WWE because TNA then screwed a lot of people over. And you see a lot of people from TNA is now in WWE and NXT. So, all in all, good match. The Hardy Boys did their signature moves, poetry, emotion, <laughs> the twist of fate, crazy old Jeff jumping off the tallest ladder in the world. Crashing down on Sheamus and Cesaro. So, good to see the Hardy Boys back and being the Raw Tag Team Champions. Finally, we got some legit Tag Team Champions at the moment. So, we'll see how they go. Maybe the Broken Matt and Jeff Hardy are going an expedition of gold and go take the SmackDown titles too. So, we'll see what happens with that. Then we had John Cena and Nikki Bella versus Miz and Maurice. Their storyline was building up pretty good with Miz talking about how fake John Cena and Nikki's relationship is and all the stuff that they do on Total Divas and Total Bellas and all that. But the funny thing about the match was the crowd was cheering for the Miz <laughs> through the whole match, but this match was Really short. John Cena and Nikki end up pinning Miz and Maurice. And what happened with everybody knew this was going to happen because the way the story line was going, that John proposed to Nikki at the end, end of the match. People go ooh and ah, cheering for him, making John Cena a baby face again. But probably when he come back out on SmackDown, they probably boo him still. John Cena sucks. So that's just the way it is. So we'll see what's going on with that. And John is going away for a while. So wonder what storyline they're going to do with him. So, yes. Seth Rollins versus Triple H and then no holds bar, no sanction match. Triple H always puts on a hell of a good match when he has somebody good to wrestle against. Seth Rollins was coming in injured, but both of them still pulled out all the stops. Triple H came out in a biking entrance. I guess that was his tribute to Lemmy. So, that was cool to see Stephanie ride on the back like a biker chick, which was cool to see. She was looking good, as always. So, Seth picks up the win. He deserved to win because triple. it made no sense for Triple H to win this match. Glad nobody interfered in the match. And Stephanie finally got her come up in by somebody because she got put through the table near the end of the match. So that was cool to see. And this is when the show goes downhill for him. Yeah, it only had one bright spot for some people. And some people just want to poo-poo stuff and just they don't get it. So... You had Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. The build was kind of crappy, but nothing could compare to how bad off this match is. 
I don't know if Randy just didn't care. I don't know if the agents didn't know how to book Bray Wyatt. If they was going to go through all this match, they should have just kept the belt on AJ because putting the belt back on Randy with Bray not even having a title. To, this was his first title to defense, and he ended up losing. Makes no sense. They had, was do, trying to do some little power games with Bray Wyatt, just having images of bugs and worms pop up on the um, canvas. And the referee kept on jumping out when he seen it because he was feeling peeped out. But that was just corny. They should have never even did that. And poor Bray. We was all happy to see him with the belt. And they just yanked it from him just like that. You know the character Bray Wyatt don't need belt. I would have liked to see a nice little long run with him. They just screwed all that up. I know a lot of people was mad about this. Randy Orton did not need to be the champ. He could have lost to Bray Wyatt and everything would have been okay. But they just screwed that up. We'll see what they're going to do with Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt has no luck at WrestleMania. He might as well not even wrestle at WrestleMania because all they do is just screw him over every damn turn. So, next match was Brock Lesnar and Goldberg versus the Universe title. Goldberg's match has been very short, but that's Goldberg. People just don't understand that. Brock Lesnar, Mr. Suplex City, people get, then got pissed off of him because all he does is just one suplex and that's it. But this match was straight and to the point. Brock Lesnar ate a couple of spears from Goldberg and kicked out of the jackhammer. So they did one impressive spot where Goldberg was trying to spear Brock. Brock did a leapfrog over Goldberg. Nobody think they will see that. We got 10 suplexes from Brock Lesnar. He got Goldberg in the F5 and took the title. People was happy about that. I thought it was an excellent ma match. I enjoyed it a lot, so I had no complaint about it. The next match was the six-pack challenge for the SmackDown Women's Championship. This match was just a waste of time. It was supposed to be on the pre-show, but they moved it up to the regular show. Hey, this is something they could have did on SmackDown because this match just went by so quick. Naomi ended up getting the win. It was Alexa Billis, Becky Lynch, Carmella, Mickey James, Natalia, and Naomi. So, it, it match was real short. They didn't most of the girls really didn't even do nothing in the ring, for real, to be honest with you. So, huh. This match was black, too. Then we get, most likely, the retirement of The Undertaker. But you know how Vince is with stuff sometimes. Him versus Roman Reigns. Let me tell you something about this match. Undertaker looked old. He looked worn out. He should have retired after he lost against Brock Lesnar, but he wanted to get a couple more matches in. And Roman was going in. Nobody likes him. Nobody wants to see him. It's just like 10, 15 percent of fans that like him. Nobody wanted to see him be Undertaker and no match to retire him. It should have been John Cena. I don't care what nobody said. Even John Cena on Talking Smack said he should have been fighting Undertaker at WrestleMania. And I think they would have put on a much better match. Roman can't lead a match. Undertaker is just too was too broken down to have anything. It was so bad off that they was gonna try to do Roman was trying to do a reversal on a tombstone power driver and he just couldn't pull it off. I don't know if Undertaker was just dead weight on him or Roman was just that sloppy. This match was just it was a waste of time even happening and closed the show. I don't think nobody was happy closing the show this way. It was just depressing. And I would at least, if I would have done anything, I would have had somebody interfere with the match because it was an old Bill's Hall bar match. Vince is just determined to have Roman his superstar, and nobody wants to see that. It's just a shame and disgrace that you won't turn him heel. Basically, 
Roman, his story is he was a failed football player. He was working at his um, sister's business, building chairs and moving furniture. He couldn't do nothing in football. He didn't go back to school. And the only other thing he could do since it was in his family was to do wrestling. And that's the only reason why he's wrestling is just to get rich. His, you could tell his heart isn't in it. It's a damn shame that we gonna have to deal with Roman being the main guy for the next few years. Hopefully somebody will come along. You got people like Finn Balor, Shinsuke Nakamura, Samoa Joe could easily take that spot, but Vince is just determined to have him as the top man, and it's a damn shame he's going to Eventually, he's going to turn away a lot of wrestling fans if he keep on doing what he's doing with Roman. Roman needs to do something. Even put him on SmackDown. Don't have him win the title at all, period, in the next two or three years. But we know that they're going to have him fight Brock at WrestleMania next year and win. Unless if he don't turn heel, it's just a waste of time, man. It's just a shame and disgrace that we had to deal with. Roman Reigns, so that's basically my review of WrestleMania 33. It was better last year, but that's not saying much. Well, this is Wild Man Will signing off. See you next time.